few years ago, a 17-year-old boy held down a 13-year-old girl in Dalkeith Country Park near Edinburgh and raped her. And he's been convicted and sentenced just recently. He wasn't sent to prison, though. He was given a community sentence because he was under the age of 25 and under the Scottish Government's new guidelines for sentencing. Then really, the judge should be very reluctant to give a prison sentence because people under the age of 25, their brains are not really working properly. They're not fully developed. They're not really good at assessing risks or whatever uh, at that age. Now, to my mind, if someone's judgment is not so good, that means they need, they need more deterrence, not less. But the Scottish government thinks the, the opposite. Now, there's quite a furore about this uh, rapist getting away without any prison sentence. Humza Yusuf said, it's a matter for the judiciary. In other words, don't blame me. It's up to the individual judge. I mean, how dishonest is that? The judge was acting on the Scottish government's guidance. But Humza Yusuf tried to make out it was you know, nothing to do with him. Now, if anyone wants to tighten up the legal system, the criminal justice system with regard to rape, this will be a good place to start. Rapists don't get away without going to prison. Uh, but that's not the target area at the moment. The uh, gender campaigners, basically feminist campaigners, they're always looking at a, you know, a new gender-related issue to be campaigning on. And they've looked at rape convictions in Scotland, because they currently run at about 51%, compared to about 91% for other uh, crimes that go to trial. Now, why is that? Why is the conviction rate for rapes relatively low? Well, I've been selected for jury duty a couple of times. Well, selected, called to it. My name has never been pulled out of the, of the bowl. But the two times I've been in court listening to the case being presented, there are both rape cases. And listening to the circumstances, and both of them, I thought, good luck to the jury making any sense of this. Because quite a typical situation, two witnesses, male and female, uh, both drunk or on drugs, uh, in a room on their own, some sort of sexual activity going on. Uh, one of them claims to have changed their mind or withdrew consent or lost consciousness. Uh, sometimes the complaint is raised months after, uh, sometimes after the relationship has, has broken down. A very difficult situation to make a judgment on. Now, my advice to people, male and female, would be avoid this situation. Yeah, consent is very important, but so is common sense. So avoid putting yourself in a situation where you're vulnerable to a crime or you're vulnerable to a false accusation. So when jurors are faced with these situations, they often say they're not going to convict. They're not willing to basically destroy someone's life on the basis of fairly uncertain evidence, conflicting reports, and they just don't think it's beyond reasonable doubt, so they don't uh, convict. Now, then generally jurors, you know, if someone drags someone into the bushes and rapes them in the park, they're pretty... Uh, straight down the line with that but with these more subtle situations then juries can be a bit reluctant to uh, press the button to convict now enter stage left feminism they look at this and think it's a gendered issue the accused are mainly males the victims are mainly females therefore it's a gender issue therefore it's a quality issue it's a justice issue and more convictions would be justice um, so their idea of justice is to have more men convicted rather than wanting to make sure the ones who are guilty are convicted and the ones who are innocent are not. So they're already coming in with an attitude that is antithetical to justice. And let's see how it's going to work out. Well, the Scottish Government, of course, has all ears to feminist extremist campaigners. And the Scottish Government's come up with the idea of, well, what we'll do, let's just scrap juries then for this type of trials, rape and sexual assault. Now, quite a few lawyers in Scotland, I'm delighted to say, are boycotting this scheme. They're saying they're not going to participate in any trials where the Scottish government is scrapping juries merely because they don't like the results that the juries come up with. And imagine if you've been accused of a, some sort of sexual crime and they say to you, oh, we've decided you're going to take part in a, in a new pilot project. The pilot project is designed to make it more likely that you're convicted. Are you happy with that? Uh, well, anyone with any sense would say no. They're not. The other part of the scheme is the judge, having made his decision, must give a written judgment and the judge will know that the pressure is on. If you think someone's innocent, you've got to have pretty good excuses, good reasons for that in your written judgment. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be scrutinised and you're going to be under pressure. So the whole system designed not to give justice, but to shift the balance in favour of the accuser. Now, part of the reason they want to get rid of juries is that they believe juries believe rape myths. Now, these are the rape myths that they believe 
juries tend to believe and therefore make them unreliable. Uh, they think the juries believe the victims should seek to escape or resist a rapist. Victims should seek to escape or resist a rapist. I would say, well, often, yes, I would have thought so. If someone's going to complain about something, I say they're going to see someone's life destroyed and be sent to prison, I mean, quite rightly, if they did it, then, yeah, some sort of attempt to escape and resist would probably be appropriate in many circumstances. But there are exceptions. Obviously, someone might be semi-conscious. Someone might feel so pressurized they were unable to resist. Maybe there's an implied threat of violence. But if there was, how is that conveyed? Body language, manner, all very difficult to prove in court. Right, the next rape myth that juries apparently believe is that if it's a real rape, the person would immediately report it. Now, again, I would hope someone, if they were raped, they would report it uh, immediately, but there might be reasons why they don't. They might be so frightened or traumatised that they didn't report it straight away. It took a while for them to, uh, you know, to pluck up the courage to go to report it. But if it's something that's happened two years ago and the person only reports it when the relationship has gone sour, then you think, well, you know, maybe there's some other factors to balance here. Another rape myth that apparently juries hold is that previous sexual contact between a complainer and an accused means they must have consented. I don't think anyone actually believes that because that would be a ridiculous thing uh, to believe. But on the other hand, it's not entirely relevant. If people you know, routinely, you know, I've got a sexual relationship, then that is a relevant factor to consider when assessing any other behavior, when trying to weigh the evidence about a particular uh, incident. But also subsequent sexual behavior is, is also regarded as, as out of bounds in terms of evidence in court. So if someone accused someone of rape, but then carries on having sex with him afterwards, the court is not allowed to hear of that. That has to be kept secret from the court, whereas I think that's highly relevant information. It's not conclusive, but it's very relevant in making a judgment on that particular case. Now, some people say the idea that juries believe these rape myths, well, they don't actually believe them. I find that quite credible. Uh, but in any case, in a rape case, the judge directs the jury. He will say to them, there could be a good reason why the complainer didn't resist. There be a, could be a good reason why they delayed in reporting the rape. So the judge directs the jury and helps them to understand the evidence and come to a conclusion. So I don't say that really has been a problem. What is a problem though already uh, is the law in Scotland about what evidence you can bring forward in a sexual offence case. And this law is specific to Scotland. Just listen to this. In the trial of a person charged with an offence, the court shall not admit or allow questioning designed to elicit evidence which shows or tends to show that the complainer is not of good character. Okay, so the fact that the accuser has made three pre previous false allegations, for example, that can't be brought up in court. You can't bring up if the accuser has at any time engaged in sexual behaviour not forming part of the subject matter of the charge. So if they claim they were raped on Friday night, the fact that they had sex with the man again on uh, Saturday morning, consensual, it, you can't bring that into it. That can't even be mentioned in the court. Okay. Uh, or the, the next rule. Um, has at any time other than shortly before, at the same time or shortly after the act which formed part of the subject matter of the charge, engaged in such behaviour, not been sexual behaviour, as might be found, uh, as might found the inference that the complainer is likely to have consented to those acts. Okay, so information that would lead you to think that the complainer had actually consented to them is not allowed in court unless it was in a very tight time frame. So any sort of information or messages before or after, um, not admissible in court, even though they're obviously highly relevant, not conclusive, but relevant, you're not allowed to, to bring them in. Now, how about this one? You can't bring in any subject matter that uh, might found the inference that the complainer is not a credible or reliable witness. Now, a reliable witness is one who can actually remember what happened. A credible witness is one who tells the truth. In other words, if you've got evidence that shows that the complainer actually can't remember what happened or actually is a liar, you can't bring that before the jury, before the court. That's not allowed. Now, all those rules there, you can apply to the judge specifically 
uh, for an exception to them with a certain piece of information. But you get the drift. The idea is that you're supposed to think generally you can't. It's only in exceptional circumstances that you're allowed to point out that actually the person making the accusation is a compulsive liar. Uh, but generally the judge will say, no, you can't bring that uh, into the case. Again, this is a quote from a lawyer who deals with this area. Uh, it says, these regulations are now so restrictive that many feel that the pendulum has swung too far away from the accused and towards the prosecution. Uh, yeah, it certainly seems that way to me as well. Because the objective is to get more men convicted. The objective is not to come to the right conclusions so that the men who deserve punishment get convicted and punishment, uh, punished, and the men who don't deserve it don't get convicted. No, no, that's not what they want. They just want more, more men convicted. Innocent or guilty, not so bothered about that. We just want more men convicted. Now, a question I have about this is if juries can't do the job in this sort of case, why do we trust them to do the job in any other case as well? And then trial by jury, as I say, is a pretty fundamental right uh, when you're facing charges of this gravity, and it shouldn't be interfered with just to appease some feminist activists. Now, in Scotland, if it's feminism versus justice, you know which side's going to win. Feminism will win, unopposed, completely unopposed in the Scottish Parliament, including by the Scottish Conservative Party. But the Scottish Family Party would challenge and end this battle of the sexes mentality. I mean, is this the way you see the world? That there's a struggle for supremacy between men and women, and you've got to fight on your side for the ultimate victory. Is that the way you see the world? No. Do you know anyone who sees the world like that? Not really. I certainly don't. And if that's not the way you see the world, then you need to be joining the Scottish Family Party to bring some common sense back into Scottish politics. You can join via the link below. Thanks for watching.